upgraded our emergency. Yes, can't you tell? To Utah's version of beer on a Sunday, which is ginger beer. We have three movies that we're talking about tonight, yeah. or should I say this morning, because it is 1.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, so let's get started, but first let's uh, pop these bad boys. Let's do it. We started out our day with a screening of Them That Follow. Yeah, Them That Follow um, follows this rural um, Pentecostal um, community of faith goers. They're kind of a smaller group on the outskirts of society. They follow this pastor um, played by Walton Goggins. Walton Goggins is amazing. Can't we all agree? Yes. In this movie, he plays this really lively pastor that's also a snake handler. Well, so Them That Follow is... Basically centered, though, around this girl named Mara, mm -hmm. who is the daughter of the pastor. And she follows blindly in her father's footsteps. Like, she's very religious because that's how she was brought up. But she also falls in love with a boy who's played by Thomas Mann, who mm -hmm. isn't super into the religion, doesn't really buy into it. She kind of has an affair with him becomes pregnant with his child, even though she's set to marry someone else. Yes, a lot of drama. A lot of drama in these backwoods. So the movie is directed by not just one, but two directors. They are a directing team, Brits Poulton and Dan Madison Savage. And what they do in this movie, it starts off in a very atmospheric place. It really sets up that, that this place is kind of ethereal, but also something's wrong here. I know there's a lot of documentaries on Netflix that kind of go into these really dark, um, the underbelly of religious cults. And I think if you're into that sort of film, you'll find this film really fascinating. Yeah. This world of like snake handlers and um, getting demons out of little children and, and not calling doctors when you're sick because you don't believe in it, even though you're clearly going to die if you don't have medicine. Yeah. It's crazy that that's how, I mean... It is, Maybe it's not crazy. It, Sorry, well, no offense. And that's, I think, you're touching on something exactly that Dan Madison Savage was saying during the Q&A. He was saying that the reason why he was so interested in this community of snake handlers just was because he didn't know anything about them. He was so curious yeah. as to who they were, what drove them, and so it was what... It was that that drove him to make this movie. So the next movie we saw was a little different than them that follow. Yeah, one that we were not intending to see. We stumbled upon Paradise Hills starring yes. Emma Roberts mm -hmm. as a girl who finds herself in a futuristic rehab of sorts. <laughs> it's That's a pretty good summation of it. Paradise Hills is a visionary movie. It's It has this like... CGI design of like Alice in Wonderland going on. It on acid. On acid. Basically what the movie is about is Emma Roberts finds herself in a futuristic rehab with um, this, this head woman who is very strict and she befriends her bunk mates and mm -hmm. they just kind of survive in this rehab by doing yoga yeah, um, it's yeah. a very generic rehab. There, people are in there for alcohol abuse, for overeating. Yeah, there for are a lot of anxiety, a lot of heavy <laughs> issues, but it's handled in a very light, topical way. So Emma Roberts is, is kind of like a princess that's stuck in a castle, and yeah. she can't get out. She's on an island, so. Personally, I think the movie should have been called Paradise Island or Hell nice Island. Opportunity. Let's where the hills. I also people. have a lot of other thoughts about this movie. If anyone <laughs> is asking for my opinion, I, I think that this movie can be applauded for being very visually unique. It's mm -hmm. ambitious in a lot of ways. Where the movie suffers is that it's just you know line readings um, fall flat. The story doesn't really kind of connect or make sense and unfortunately we did see quite a few people leaving the screening as yeah. as it went on and you know there that's kind of a death sentence so we take notes when we are in screenings and sometimes it's hard to do because it's dark <laughs> um <laughs> and uh yeah. so we were sitting in the way back of the theater yeah, um i'm row. writing some notes and i don't know if you can tell my pen dies and I'm basically just left uh, with, here. why? <laughs> so the last film that we saw tonight, I oh, feel like yeah. the party mm -hmm. started in the tent as we were waiting to get into the theater. 
Postmates people came and like passed out free food. We were doing camp cheers and chants. Like, yeah, the volunteers <laughs> were trying to lead everyone through these things. It wasn't Morgan and I, just to be clear. <laughs> We weren't the only ones who were, you know, trying to excite Velvet the crowd. Velvet Buzzsaw. The party started in line waiting for Velvet Buzzsaw. Going into this movie, it it felt like it was one of the more buzzy, electric movies, um, you know, sitting in I see what you did it. there. Uh, buzzy. Um, Velvet Buzzsaw is the newest movie from Dan Gilroy, uh, who directed Nightcrawler, um, starring Jake Gyllenhaal, who is also... In this movie as well, as well as Rene Russo, who is also in this movie, also a Nightcrawler. It's just a reteaming. And of, also in L.A. Also in L.A. Yeah, it's this yeah. kind of like examination of the seedy underbelly weird world that apparently Dan Gilroy is fascinated by. Yeah, and this is the seedy underbelly of the art world. It's easy to make fun of the art folk and the like waspiness of certain yes. people. And that's what Dan Gilroy does. But he also likes to see them die in gruesome ways. It's certainly a wacky and weird premise. Um, basically, a, uh, a deceased artist um, leaves behind his paintings. Um, all of his work is discovered. It's supposed to be... Um, you it's know, supposed to be destroyed. Supposed to be destroyed, and what happens yeah. is, of course, the vulturous art world gets their hands on it. Um, as it gets uh, sold and seen, then what happens is the the paintings may or may not still have some spiritual element to the artist who mm -hmm. might be looking to exact some sort of revenge. It's not a nightcrawler. It's not the creepy kind of like edge of your seat movie it's yeah. it's a little more silly than a nightcrawler yeah it has this silly satiric vibe to it um it is like a kind of a horror stylized in a weird way it's not exactly shocking scary you know you you can watch this movie with the lights off and you won't be terrified i don't think yeah so jake gyllenhaal oh we gotta talk about him very interesting character in this yeah. movie he's yeah. so funny and so specific it, yeah. he, so he plays an art critic yeah and he's very flamboyant he is bisexual because he yeah. is in a relationship with a man, but then kind of goes back and forth with this one other uh, art dealer, curator, dealer. Curator. Yeah. He's also very funny and snarky. Yeah. And I can only imagine, though, like he, he's been acting for years. So oh, I'm yeah. sure he is mimicking some of the critics he's met along the way in being this kind of snooty stuffy yeah. critic kind of very full of himself and uh you know judging and passing judgments on right. all of these works of art i think you're totally right i would imagine i would be yeah. super curious to ask him you know like is there any one person that you base this characterization on because right. yeah it's very hilarious he does yeah. all these like little things with his face and with his yeah his mannerisms mannerisms so. it's hilarious like yeah you'll Definitely get a kick out of seeing Jake Gyllenhaal um, in a role like you really have not seen him before. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, so fun fact, actually following the movie, I was looking on Twitter and going through everyone who's tweeted about the movie, mm -hmm. and one person um, clarified or said that a velvet buzzsaw is actually um, some like slang or nickname for like a rich person's fart, if you will. A velvet buzzsaw. <laughs> Check that out. So the movie is going to be available to you to be able to see on Netflix streaming starting this Friday. Well, that concludes another edition of Nightcap with our ginger beer, which is the next best thing to alcohol. So until next time, thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.